Uh, the World Bank's engagement with civil society has really evolved over the years. What used to be quite a, an adversarial sort of relationship till about 10 or 15 years ago is now one of a pretty integrated partnership um, where so many years ago we had demonstrators outside our building during the time of the annual meetings. Today we speak about open development where civil society and individuals all over the world are part of the process of generating development solutions with the bank more of a convener. And of course we regularly and very systematically consult with civil society whenever there's a new policy or a new strategy. And the best case in point for that has been the new access to information policy of the bank where uh, civil society partners were not only part of the consultation to help us formulate the policy, but actually worked with us in getting the implementation arrangements in place. The President's speech is quite a landmark speech, and it's caused quite a buzz both within the bank and outside among our partners. Uh, it really gives the rationale now for the role of civil society in development and in, in the process of implementing development solutions. And I think what we're going to see now is a much more concerted and systematic effort to get uh, civil society actors involved uh, in project implementation and helping uh, mo us monitor the implementation of projects and in, in uh, getting the whole transparency agenda going forward. So, so I think it's, it's sent a very good signal and now the challenge really is to translate it into action. I think the, the events in the MENA region have really been a kind of uh, wake-up call for everybody, especially to listen to and to have the skills to tap into citizen aspirations at an early stage and then make sure that, that uh, citizen voice is incorporated into development programs and projects and that citizens again have the means to monitor what's going on and what that really means is uh, developing the tools to, and the skills to, to hear the citizen and then to design projects in such a way that it is always in tune with what the citizen's aspirations are. And I think you're going to see a lot of innovation, a lot of experimentation take place uh, in the MENA region uh, with a lot of lessons being brought in from elsewhere in the south. And then the challenge will be to how do you really scale that up. But it's, uh, it's, it's exciting times ahead for all of us who work in development. What's going to be very important is that the events in the Middle East have shown us uh, or confirmed for us the, the, the sheer importance and, and, and criticality of civil society. But at the same time, these countries haven't really had a tradition of, of very active civil society involvement. In some countries, what we call civil society doesn't even exist. So uh, the setting up of a, of a network of this type is, is in a way the first step and it would help to get these incipient forces together and by bringing them onto a common platform and on, on, into a network, you, you sort of help scale them up and give them the kind of uh, depth that they wouldn't have had as, as individual organizations. And the, and the role of civil society is going to be so important that building the capacity in turn becomes uh, almost an essential first step.